Can who meet with us? Thank you. 
We can sing it loud as ever with our faith most strong. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse 1 and verse 2. May God help us to cling to the Bible and the Bible alone. Amen. We are going to sing verse 1 and verse 3. <laughs> Amen. 
song, the blood wash for dream. After that, we'll give room for testimonies. We'll give room for two people this time, and two people this time also. We'll be given short interlude by our, our sister leading the songs. And after that, after the testimonies, we shall have another solo, I believe, solo, the old rocket cross, before we, we have the message of the Lord. God bless us. Victory, victory, 
He said, save my soul. Yeah. When he said my soul, of course, it has immediate effect on academic life. It has immediate effect on my relationship at home. I was a day to that time, I do check to school and in the morning, you know, and come back. So I could see that, yes, it was wonderful. And then I came across this wonderful gospel, I pray Jesus and the Bible, and they baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, it was hard to get the Holy Ghost. I had a classmate, you know, and uh, he was a Muslim, and through our effort, he was converted to Christianity. And then he went to, to church and got baptized in the case. Eh? Brother Sam, do you believe the Holy Ghost? What is this? What do you know? <laughs> we brought him to this gospel. No, he said, you believe? He said, you, know, you must follow yourself. So he went to the classroom to go and pray and blow up the door. And baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. And since that time, I have never regretted it at all. I don't know because as a young person, it was very challenging. Because many things I had to click drop, and uh, I thank God I dropped them. And I found a new company, Amen. both nationally and internationally, only me to God. So this gospel God gave me education, and gave me a hope, and it gave me a future. So please, please pray for me that I will be able to the end. Amen. I want to thank God for being my Savior Amen. and for sanctifying me. Amen. I was not good at all. I was a sinner. I hated so much my people around me. I was a person that who changed. If you do me bad, I also pray to you. But for what made me to believe in him is not that I was just six years old, uh, away from my family, yeah, until six years again. And what God has done during, what God has done for me in my life during those years. It made, it made me believe in him and make him as my savior. Please, children of God, pray for me that I will not miss heaven. I want to thank God for His way. Amen. I want to thank God because He's so faithful. Amen. And I want to thank God because He saved my soul. Amen. And I pray for Him as my prayer. Amen. And we have Thank you. 
Thank the Lord this afternoon for the wonderful service that He's given us this morning, and yet another opportunity for us young people to come together and fellowship Him. So let's begin uh, our time here now, reading uh, from Proverbs chapter nine, Proverbs chapter twenty-nine, verse eighteen. Proverbs, I'll read quickly Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It says, When there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So, for the few minutes that we have this night, uh, this afternoon, we have been talking about 
envisioning the future. So from the place where we read, the point is telling us that without no vision, people perish. And it's giving us the assurance that happy is the man that keepeth the law of God. So the first question is, what is vision? Vision basically in a simple term is what we see. What we can perceive with our own eyes. But it's more than that. Vision, according to the scripture, is also what we do not see with our physical eyes. So there is a physical vision and there is a spiritual vision. Let's quickly go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. I read quickly. And, uh, 4, verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So there are two kinds of visions. Yeah. When I talk about vision, I talk about two kinds of vision. The temporal vision, the ones that you can see with our physical eyes, and the eternal vision. And the, the, the great task here, which we have to do is that uh, this vision that we are talking about, it's not about the worldly vision. Because there is a worldly vision. People, uh, we, have, we have come, our civilization, we have come to be what we are today because people visualize, they imagine, they thought of new inventions that they could create so that they could make the world a better place. Some, done, some have done that through the direct way, through the correct way, but some have done it through the wrong way. But today we are talking about vision because uh, as a Christian, we should know where we are going. And the first vision that we should have is the vision of heaven. Heaven should be our primary goal in our vision. And uh, why is vision so important? Vision is very important because vision will help you to prepare yourself. Vision determines direction. What did I say? Vision determines direction. If you have a vision of going to Okaanja, of course you will not head into the south. If you have a vision of going to heaven, in other words, you take the necessary steps for you to be able to reach that destiny which is heaven. And the first step of your vision is that you must be saved. Second one, you must be sanctified, and then you must be baptized, and you must continuously follow the Lord. The Lord. So, when we are talking about vision, as much as we want to talk about spiritual vision, and that means we have to set our vision according to the word of God. That is, our vision should come from the Word of God. And the Bible is full of examples of people who had their visions. Because of our, of our time, we're gonna, we won't read all of them, but we'll be just refer, re, referencing them. One of them was Abraham. When God called Abraham, he, called, he told Abraham, look, look up, what do you see? And then he, he, he told him that he would give him everything that he would see, that his seed would be as great as the sands of the seashore. That was the promise that God had given to Abraham. And we thank God because those, those promises are today being manifested. Even in our midst. May his name be glorified. We also know about the story of the dreamer, which was Joseph. When he was a young, while he was a teenager, God gave him a vision. And it was a, a very wonderful vision. Because it was a vision that was, was showing how God greatly in the future would elevate him to power. And of course, of, uh, the, of the presence of God, because of the excitement that he had when he had that vision, he told his parents, he told his brother, and what happened? They were laughing at him. You mean that uh, even his father, I also bowed before you, your mom also bowed, even your older brother, all of them who bowed to you? You must be crazy. So it, the, the vision was so great. That uh, even his brother, they were, they were not believing. They were, that's why they sold him to the, to the Egypt. That is to say that the vision that God will give you, it's going to be a very big vision. As the children of God, we, not, we should not just live a many of life, a normal life. No. God has wonderful plans for our lives. Before we were born, God created us and has 
given us all the potential, all the intelligence that we have to achieve whatever He has told us to achieve. May the Lord bless us. So, the vision that God is going to give you, it's not a shallow vision. It's not a parochial vision. It's a big vision. Amen. That's why you should spend time to pray. You should spend time to consecrate and ask God, why am I here on this world? Yeah. Why am I here on this world? Because uh, most of us, uh, while we are young kids, we, like, we don't like to see what God has for us. Especially young people, or while we are young kids, we, we like to copy. We like copy kids. We monkey see, monkey do. If your father, if your father is an engineer, I'll also be an engineer. If your mother is a medical doctor, I might dream also to become a medical doctor. If your brother is a, a teacher, I want to teach just like my dad. It's not wrong, but you should make sure that whatever you want to be is what God has planned you to be. Amen. Otherwise, if one of the, this day you'll be anxious because what you are living is not what God has planned you to do. Right. And the Lord be with us. Amen. So we should align our vision according to the word, the word of God. We said that vision is important because vision will allow you to hit a target. You cannot hit a target that you cannot see. Like if I close your eye now and I give you and I give you a stone, throw this stone to the door and then I train you this side, of course you won't be able to hit that stone. So vision will help us to hit the target. Vision is what? The destiny. What did I say vision is? Destiny. The destiny. What you want to achieve in life. And uh, the destiny is not all. That means if your vision is a destiny and you are starting to walk toward that destiny, then you must set priorities. Right. Let me tell you a story. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was 70 years old and then I came to Namibia. I didn't know how to speak English. I was just learning how to speak English. I was placed in the school, I was placed in the school, uh, said, uh, named Jacob Marengo, which is my alma mater. And then when I was there, they told me, uh, when I, immediately when I got there, it was the beginning of the year, the result of grade 12 came of the, of the previous year, and that year I was in grade 11. I saw, oh, there was that call called school, called uh, San Boniface. When I was seeing their result, I just said, A plus, A. There was no B, no C, just A, A plus, A, A plus. And I said, oh, God. If you would give me just a result like that, and then I went, I told my colleagues, look, colleagues, Next year, with my broken English, I should, get, I should be able to get some results like they were laughing. We don't even know how to speak English. And you are saying you have to get A+. Plus. I said, no, I will do my best and God will help me. So by the grace of God, I knew I had to be saved because I was a sinner. And that happened to be my first Sunday in this church, in Vidu, there, in that Pena. Then I thought, God, no, I cannot achieve those things without you. Please help me. I humble my heart. That same first Sunday, God saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized me. And from there, I was consecrated. And there's a song we said, Will there be any star in my crown? I used to sing that song, Will there be any star in my report? <laughs> <laughs> I used to ask myself such a question. Yeah. And thank God, I, 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 I was, God was giving, was helping me, was teaching me every day, was helping me. And guess what? First semester, ah, uh -uh, poor result. Second semester, things were get, getting better. We came to grade 12, same thing, God was helping us. And guess what? At the end yeah. of the semester, Amen. oh, we came. Yes. And then we sent the message because you have to put your student up and send. Yeah. When we saw, we just saw, oh, I was every, every grade 10, grade 12, you know, so that moment where you send your message. And the result is to come. We just pray God. But I know the exam was well, but which sample? Would there be any star? We just say, would there be any B or D? So all of a sudden, I just oh, they said, they sent the message, and I said, oh, English D. I said, oh, biology B, oh, that's much better. Mathematics A, oh, that's nice. Physics A star, oh, that's good. Agriculture A star, oh, that's nice. Portuguese A star. <laughs> I was very happy. I was giving thank, thanks to God. And some would say, no, you are blessed. You people, your family is blessed. No, 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 no. It's, yeah. not, it's the grace of God. Yeah. And the time to which we set apart to study. Yeah. That is to tell if God did it for me, can yeah. do much more to you. You that in grade 10, you that in grade 12, and a vision. Yeah. Don't just go to school because your dad tells you to go to school. Right. No, don't. You should have vision. Because once you have a vision, vision gives pain and purpose. Yeah. 
<coughs> vision gives pain a purpose. Yeah. Because I remember back then, high school you are. Every Saturday you have to go to school alone to study. It's painful. No one is there. All these days you cannot enjoy, you have to study. It's painful. But you know, yes. nothing good comes easy. Right. So we have to prepare ourselves so that we can be able to get something good in life. So we thank God because from where we are now, which is our initial point to our vision, we need uh, provision. What do I say? We need provisions. And start thinking already what to become in the future. Just start thinking it because uh, I tell you, you cannot picture in the future, you cannot picture. I repeat, you cannot feature in the future, you cannot picture. In other words, you cannot become what you cannot plan or what you cannot dream about. Start praying. What is that thing when you wake up and say, God, I want to be that one? Because God is not just creating you out of like uh, we are not a carbon copy, as we like to say. We are not carbon copy. God has a plan for us, and His plan for us is very wonderful. It will live. Uh, it will be. It's outstanding. Stop copying your brother or your dad or your friend. God has a genuine, unique plan for your life. May the Lord bless us. So, once you have your vision, don't just keep your vision to your mind. Yeah. Because we say there is a physical vision, there is a spiritual vision. Uh, the Bible teaches us that once you cut the vision, you should write it down. <laughs> Otherwise you forget, because the, what you are dreaming day, that is in your mind, that is the spiritual, that is the intangible, you cannot see it. But once you take the spiritual to the physical, as you write it down, and then you will write it down, God will be able to help you to bring that vision to come to May the Lord help us. So let's read quickly in Habakkuk. In the book of Habakkuk chapter chapter 2. And let's see the instructions that God has given to the prophet <coughs> so that we'll be able also to our vision just don't be in our mind but we'll be able to jot it down. Okay, so it says uh, I read Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 2. And the Lord answered me and said Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So the Bible, God is telling us that uh, whatever your vision you have, you should write it down. So as a student, write it down. We each write great. Then write it down. English, I want A. Mathematics, I want B. This, I want that one. You have to write. And once you are writing it, God will still give you more clue on how you can bring it to pass. That's why we say you should consecrate and make sure you write your vision so that you can be able to, you be able to attain, to attain it. So set your goals. Set your goals. The vision will not be immediate. It is a process. It is a process. And God will help you and carry you through, through this process. May the Lord help us. Amen. And that's not to say God gave you a vision, then it's finished. You now start sleeping, you don't start, you don't revise. No, God said it to come to pass, so I need to rest in the Lord. No, make sure you study. Yeah. Because if you don't study, God will only multiply that which you put in. If you put in zero, what the God will do? If you multiply by zero, it will be what? Zero. And if you are just putting one, God will multiply by one, it will just be that which you are putting in. But if you invest time in praying, in consecrating yourself, in reading your books, for great and great job, there is no only day. Only day is standing time. It's time for you to set apart your time table. Go to the library, get books, practice past question papers. Even, and pray, make sure I pray. Work hard, pray harder. Work hard, pray harder. Do not forget that. Do not forget that. And sometimes you are even studying God's day, you stand there on the spot. It might come to the exam. And when you realize it, it's there. So make sure you rely upon, the, upon God while you are studying. So act on your goal. 
So, uh, in other words, uh, discipline. We need to be disciplined. As, as has been as often as, been, as, as we have been taught that uh, discipline is doing the right thing at the right time in the right way. So, as we are preparing to study for the exams, as we are preparing to achieve that which we are looking for, it can be a job, it can be a wife, it can be a husband, it can be uh, anything that we are asking from God, make sure you put discipline to, say, to find that which uh, uh, the Lord has given unto you. So we see the Bible so many visions, we remember that uh, circumstances around us, they always will be not the most pleasant one. God is, uh, God is taking us to the promised land. But remember, there is always a desert before the promised land. There is always a desert before the promised land. There is a price which you have to pay for you to get that which God has, has promised you. And uh, what you see is a function of what is in your heart. While we are looking for getting job, getting saved, or getting married and so on, make sure your, right, your heart is correct. Because uh, we know the vision. You see those people went to there. All of them they saw. There were 12 spies. They went to see the land. 12 came and gave bad report and all the congregation was crying. <coughs> but there was, there was Caleb and, Josh, and, and, and Joshua. Because they were correct with God, what they do, they gave a good report. And God wants us to give good report. Mm -hmm. There are three kinds of vision. Three kinds of vision. First one is foresight. What did I say the first one? Foresight. Yeah, foresight. Foresight is a, is a vision that helps us to, to see further. It's like the telescope. For foresight, you need a telescope. Some weeks ago, we were taken by our lecture in there when the moon was red. We were there and I, I, I had the privilege to look at the telescope and the moon was very close to me. An object which is far away, but because I used the telescope, it was close to me. Also, when you are talking about foresight, you should be able to look forward in the future. What does God do for me? What is the plan of God for me? And as you use the telescope of the word of God, God will bring the future close to you. Amen. You'll be wondering, just like I was wondering, how come the moon is so close to me? Yet very far. So God will also do it to you. You bring your future close to you so that you can able you be able to make a right decision and start preparing to achieve that. The second one is insight. What does I say is the second one? Insight. In other words, looking deep down the inside of you. It's like using a microscope, a microscope. We are looking down there with you. Is your heart right with God? Do you, do you really have the talents? Do you really have the discipline for you to be able to achieve that which you have shown with your telescope? And the last one is hindsight. Hindsight is like a, the vision that will help you to see the context. Like you are flying through a helicopter and then above your house and then you are seeing your house like that. In other words, it will help you to contextualize where you are now. So in other words, when you are looking, when you are planning to achieve whatever you want to plan in your life, and you are looking through the telescope, which is the word of God, through the microscope, which is also the word of God, and it's a point and it's showing you perhaps your error, it's showing you your failure, it's showing you the need, the skills and ability which you need for you to achieve that dream. Uh, you'll be able to eat, eat what it will help you to be motivated, it will help you to achieve whatsoever. God wants, wants you to achieve. May the Lord bless us. And now as we are drawing to our hand, the bottom line is, God has wonderful plans for you. God has wonderful dreams for you. And the Bible is the roadmap which God has given us. Everything that you want to achieve in life, the first thing is the salvation of your soul. Because we have a vision of the rapture. And all of us, by the grace of God, will be able to attain that. But make sure that whatever you are seeing there is in line with the word, the word of God. Is your heart right with God? Because it's not what you see with your eyes, but what you see with your heart. If your heart is right with God, the Lord will help you today to have a very wonderful vision. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If my spectacle is scratched, it will seem that everyone is as deficient. Because it's scratched. The scratch is in my eyes, but I'll see that those are the people are the ones that have scratches. 
Exactly also what happens. If your heart is wrong with God, when you see people, you'll be talking bad about yeah. people. You'll be murmuring bad about people. The problem is not in the, in the people. The problem is in you. So, so if you want to have a right vision, a correct vision, yeah. not a myopic vision, a short vision, Make sure your heart is right. And as your heart is right with God, God will make sure that uh, your vision will come to pass. And remember, there are enemies, many enemies that also try to take your vision away from you. Just like Joshua. Please be watchful. One of the greatest enemies that the devil has brought in this era is, is one of the very good Harley, but also very good enemies, so if I'm not using it properly. Social media. Right. See, God told you you're going to become a PhD, perhaps. Amen. And then you are all, all, you spend more than two hours on Facebook, social media. You woke up to school, woke up Facebook, Facebook, okay. Facebook message, messages, okay. You are going to school, Facebook. You can't even pray, just Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. Those are things that are stealing our attention. Right. They are distracting us. They are, they are tools that if you use correctly, yes, you may well. But if we use them wrongly, yeah. they, can also, uh, they can also destroy our vision. Right. So may the Lord help us to be self-disciplined. To make sure that we not allow anything which is contrary to, our, to the vision that God has given us uh, uh, to disappear from us. May the Lord be with us. Amen. So make sure you consecrate. Make sure you pray to God. And do not be disappointed. Because sometimes you say you share your vision with, with some relatives and they'll be laughing at you, just like Joseph. What are you saying? You mean you you do this and you do that? See, they may laugh at you. But if what God told you and you really consecrate, and then God will bring it to pass. Amen. And the good thing is your dream, once you are born again, Jesus is inside you. Right. And therefore the enemy cannot destroy your dream. Because uh, God will hide your dream in Jesus Christ. Amen. And then they will not be able to locate it. Amen. And as you consecrate, God will give you more insights on how you can achieve that. Amen. Do you want your dream to come true? Yes. Do you want your dream to come true? To come to the Savior? Ask him today to save you. Come to the altar, come to the altar, come and pray. Come to the altar, 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 come to the altar,